says in the same Ephesians 5 32 the ending part the beginning part sorry says this is a great mystery today we are not talking about marriage we are talking about sex we have zeroed in on a particular area but believe you me it's a great mystery why are some people enjoying it and why are some people so seeing it as a nightmare it all depends upon how you handle it so just as Adam knew his garden men know your wives know your woman you understand? I mean, it, which part of her body makes her happy? Which part of the day does she normally want to hear from you? Look at the work schedule of your wife. If, for example, you know your wife is in a top managerial position, Monday mornings, meetings, meetings, Monday to Wednesday, don't be bothering her with text messages and calls. You see, you need to steady to show yourself approved. But let's go on. Uh, Brother Mint, I want you to take us to a different level. Now, can you tell us what is the nature and form of sex? Please, we are, we are talking within the ambit of Christian marriage. Oh, let's keep sounding this caution. If you are under 18 and you managed, is it under 18 or above? In whichever way. If you are under 18, you are not supposed to listen to us. Put that, put that phone off. If, however, you are above, listen oh, and learn for tomorrow. Brother, can you tell us what is the nature or what is your expectation of the nature of and form of sex within a Christian marriage? Uh, I believe that uh, within the Christian marriage, one has to indulge in sex in a good atmosphere. Um, there are things which are good but there are others to which are not good when it comes to sex. Great. Certain positions doctors have made us to understand mm. are very injurious, mm. are very dangerous. Charlie, for... can you tell us some positions like that? I'm interested. <laughs> some positions. Uh, initially, I heard you say wheelbarrow. Uh, yes. Yeah, it's, hey. it's... <laughs> but wheelbarrow is a very powerful, <laughs> clinically, I mean, I mean it, it delivers a lot of pleasures. <laughs> Well, but, but quite I hear, dangerous. I hear probably um, excessive <laughs> doing of it exactly. can pose a danger. And uh, you, man, man would have to prepare. You see, sex is not just anything you jump into. You need to psych the mind of both of Great. you. You need to prepare for it. Uh, you, you, you give an example. Sometimes you can do it in the kitchen anywhere. But even that one, that you, you look out for the, the, the timing, the, whether the atmosphere is okay to do it. Sometimes the mood counts very much. But if my wife is preparing food in the kitchen in some hot pants, she is not in the mood, but she has generated my mood. What do I do? Yeah, sometimes I, I need hear, to fire. Apart from, I hear women, women communicate in so many ways. Sometimes the way they will behave uh, 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 and dress, dress and bend turn themselves and all that. Dropping yeah, some oh, spoons by yeah, my heart in front of you. Yeah. Mm. Trying to call you mm. into the act. Or trying to tell you, my man, it's been a long while. You you plow the field. You need mm. to come around. So, uh, sex can take any form. So long as it is healthy. So long as it is right. So long as the atmosphere is okay for it. I believe you can you can go on. Apostle, you are the spirit man. We know today we are putting a very uncomfortable. But this is where we want you to 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 help us with the spirit. What what, what what's your take on that? Okay, I think. Um, you know, it's very important we look at the subject of sex very, very well. It is something you either enjoy 
or endure. So I believe that convenience is everything. Whatsoever we do, you know, convenience is everything. Bishop made mention of certain positions and names and stuff like that. I believe so strongly that the names came as a result of, you know, convenient, how conveniently both organs can meet. Uh -huh. So, uh, based on that, certain names and certain uh, positions have come. But what I believe we also want you to understand is that as far as both that position favors both of you and makes it so convenient for both of you, you are at liberty to explore, you know, uh, which, whichever way, because God is not going to come down and tell you that do it this way or do it that way. It is up for you. You know, to be able to cultivate, it's hard for you to be able to explore, it's hard for you to be able to, you know, uh, uh, know the several ways you can go about, you know, to make it more interesting. So, I, I, I believe that uh, just like women, you know, in communication, we have something you call nonverbal cues. Nonverbal cues simply means communicating with our words. We can communicate with our eyebrows. We can communicate with our eyes. We can communicate with our hands. You know, there is a way your father looks at you. And you know that it means that trouble is coming. Yes. There is a way your mother looks at you and you know that, wow, I'm happy, you know. There is a way, so like Bishop Bradley said, your wife is an institution you must study. You must be schooled that in the it. institution of your wife. That is no hair for who she is. Maybe when she's in her mentors or something, her mood swings. And so, even what she enjoys, she hates it. You must know when, you know, when Apostle. you are... Sorry, elaborate this. Even what she enjoys, she hates it. Mm. Because, Please, she's, hammer on because it. she's in a mood swing. Okay. You know, women have these mood swings that you need wisdom. This one is not Bible. You have to read. You have to study. If not, Bible says lack of knowledge, my people perish. So, I also believe that sometimes some of these nonverbal cues, as in women wearing something. You know, every woman wants to feel flirty around her man. As far as he knows that where he where she is, she's safe. You know, she would do everything. She would like to feel naughty. She would like to do because she knows she's she's safe in the hands of her man. But sometimes those cues really calls for romance. And I believe that women want men want sex. Women love romance much more. And that's why if before sex, let me say before penetration. You don't really prepare the woman. You don't really do anything like foreplay, prepare the mind, prepare the body for her to be in that state. What is enjoying can rather be enduring. As far as she doesn't want to fake it, that she's not enjoying it, she will have to keep it up and endure. But when you leave, she hates you. She Powerful. doesn't like you because... So you have to know her. Powerful. You know very well to be able to Great. know what to do. Okay, so viewers, uh, I have a book which is upcoming, titled The Holy Kiss. The chapter 3 has got to do with sex bending quarrels. Now, I want to read a part of it to you. Now, it's, it, it, it starts by saying what is sex. And it says that a lot of Christians, a lot of people, Christians for that matter, view sex as a topic that should not be talked about in the church. Much more preached from the pulpit. How very unfortunate. And now this is what I said. The apple of Eve if not eaten by an Adam, will be destroyed by the schemes of the devil. If you fail to eat the apple of your Eve, the devil will come and destroy that apple. The glorious, beautiful body of your wife or that of your husband, if not well consumed through the process of sex, will lead to tantrums of demonic activities held as your partner in such magnitude that you not even recognize the person, be it physically or spiritually. Then I ask the question, so what is sex? We have deliberated. There are a lot of things there. When it comes out, you read, you, you understand. But then I want to go to the concluding part or the analysis. We said that sex is an exclusivity activity between one man and one woman. Within the ambit of Christian marriage, that means the marriage has been solemnized. It is an act of respecting the virginity of the woman and reverencing the responsibility of a man. Now, this is where most men get it wrong. I may be wrong. This is my own analysis. Any man who is not responsible, you cannot enjoy your woman. 
Being responsible towards a woman does not mean doling out cash to her. Iron headdress. Help drive her to the office. Check up on her the daytime. You see, when you show acts of care, the very things that you did to win her should not be stopped during the pendency of marriage. And I'm saying that sex is an adoration of the presence of your helper. It is an inherent activity of mankind which leads to procreation and death. Most men are dying, oh. Man of God, most men are dying. Three times daily. One in the morning. One in the afternoon. One in the evening. You see, you are dying because, listen, listen, Sex is not the display of strength. Sex is not a very elastic waist and a very strong something hammering. No! If you know how to bring about the pleasures of your wife in record minutes of four, five minutes, listen, you are hers forever. But like Apostle said, if you rather lead it to tantrums of pain, she begins to endure and not enjoy. So in conclusion on this part, we are saying that Sex is not a time to dishonor your partner. And this is why I have problems with most men. Just when you fall ready for the act, you do not take your path. The whole day there's been wooing on you. And yet you want somebody's daughter to come and take you and give you some pleasurable things with her mouth. Meanwhile, if you are asked to do a similar thing, you will, you, you will tell her some other thing. Listen, let's learn to take our baths. Get the body well adorned. Because it's a very sacred moment. There are times where, yes, spontaneously, like, like I rightly said, and you quoted me, in the kitchen, maybe whilst you're watching the garden, the kids are asleep whilst you're walking in the compound, maybe you travel somewhere, you park your car as a husband and wife, no problem. But I'm talking of the normal days. You need to watch that. So it should not be a hurriedly done act. And it should not be a one-sided activity. Man of God, can we come to church and only the pastor comes to preach except corona times? So you cannot get to the bad bedroom, quickly satisfy yourself as a man, and then you leave the woman lying down there. And because most men too are afraid to, 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 to say it, it's like the person keeps to quote apostle again, enduring and not enjoying. Sex is fulfilling God's commandments here on earth within the confines of holy matrimony. Now let's look at this. I gave an analogy in the book and I said that every tree has its own characteristics in terms of the back of the tree, the branches, leaves, and fruits. The way and manner in which you climb a coconut tree may not necessarily be the same way and manner you climb a papa. So the way and manner you were having your way with your ex before you got married, do not expect your wife or your husband to be the same way. That is why to quote again 2 Timothy, you need to study. Even Bible is saying that it is a great mystery. This is where we are lacking. And Apostle rightly said it. For lack of knowledge, my people perish. You need to study and you need to know. Now let's move into the last segment of the topic for today. And this is the question I want to bring up. Man of God, how can you enjoy your woman? How can you enjoy your wife? You've been fr freshly married. So we know you are enjoying. Anyway, this is, th this is to cheers of you for, 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 for getting married as a powerful worshiper. You've done very well. Can you tell our audience, how do you enjoy your wife? Yeah, so like you said, um, I believe strongly that one of the most cardinal things a man has to know, basic, always make time for your wife. Very, very important. You might be the busiest man on earth. You might, you might be the uh, 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 chief of staff to the president. But so long as you brought somebody's daughter into your home, you need to make time. Also, Papa, I believe you've said a lot of these things. Uh, gifts in marriage is very, very important. They spice up the marriage. It doesn't become one way. Sometimes you need to take your wife. You gifts as material gifts. Material some, gifts. Sometimes well. they are very, very important. Very, very important. You help your wife in the home. Sometimes move away from home. Someone will say home outside home. You take her some to a nice place. Probably you might not have all the money, but you can plan towards it. Take your wife somewhere. Make time. In fact, Create an atmosphere of joy between the two of you. Because mind you, at the end of the day, you are supposed to live together with her till Christ call any of you. 
Yeah, so I believe that for you to sustain your marriage, for you to enjoy your marriage, you need to put some of these things in place. Powerful. Apostle, do you have anything to... Yeah, sure. I think that um, the psychology says that the repressed sex is dangerous. Why the repressed sex is dangerous is that to think that sex does not exist, to think that sex is not possible, sex, you know, all kinds of things sometimes people put in their mind, you know, makes it so dangerous. And so it's an area we don't really need to, you know, get to. It's, it's, it's a gift given by God which ought to be enjoyed within the confines of marriage, holy matrimony. So, uh, there is a way you can do something for you not to even get, I mean, uh, bored. There is a way to go about it. How you go about it is very important. Let's say you have your room and uh, sometimes you are bored of the way where your bed is. Occasionally, you Try to do some changes in your room. That's, great. That's you put creativity. Your bed That's the, great. I mean, creativity. So it, it's all about you know. Sometimes there is this adage, this you know, it's a, it's a cultural, uh, traditional beliefs, you know, which is entering the church. Which we think say, uh, you know, you cannot be eating, you cannot be eating one type of meal every now and then. Mm-hmm. That is devilish. There is a way to eat your meal in, I mean, in a garnished way. I mean, if first you used to eat it in a, I mean, raw, you can now eat it with garnish. Add some cucumbers, add some, 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 some garlic, add something, you know, make it fresh. And the same old thing, you, you will see it in a new way. So I believe sometimes, like you rightly said, you can take vacations. Sometimes when you go outside the confines of the home, you rather see yourself in a very different way. Because you'll be amazed the kind of union, the kind of togetherness. So anything that if uh, anything that is happening that is making both of you, you know, feel fond of yourself, you are so tired of yourself, it's not about you, but it's sometimes about the environment. Yeah. When you change the environment, you begin to look, or when you change the way you look at things, everything changes. As far as you, you, you believe that you want to look at things in a different way, everything, every other thing, you know. Powerful, yes. powerful. Thank you, gentlemen. So, to this end, I also do share the opinion that most men are not engaging in sex. They are engaging in sexuality. And most women, on the other hand, do not know their own bodies. What you don't know, how can the other man know? So if indeed you need to enjoy your partner, listen, there's nothing to be shy. Let the man know when my right nipples are sad, I shoot up into the sky. It's not the clearing of the garden downstairs. If maybe my left ear loops are tickled or legged, this is how I feel. You see, communication, like Apostle was saying. So you need to let the other party know what really makes you happy. It's not magician. One person might take one year to discover your favorite spot. However, you can use just a minute to let him or her know your favorite spot. So many men don't even know gene spot. I don't want to put my panelists on the spot. But so many men don't know the gene spot. So many men don't know that even a woman's pleasure, most women's pleasures are embedded in just the clitoris and not your act of penetration. However, let me say this. To me, and from my findings and research, sex is a delight. If handled world, it becomes a delicacy. If neglection occurs to the detriment of the other party, it becomes a disaster. So, brethren, we need to watch this. Now, in ending, I want us to look at a very practical element. Why should a husband or a wife report the other spouse sexual life or conduct to your pastor. I mean, why? Why is it that your wife is not giving you good sex as you claim? Instead of you sitting down and trying to resolve it, you prefer to go to your pastor for your pastor to call her and I don't know whether it is train or educate or frighten her. I don't know. But why should people be reporting their spouses 
to their pastors. In the first place, is it a good practice? And secondly, if not, what alternative remedies can can you bring on board, Brother Winter? Like you quoted in one of the scriptures, this is a mystery. One has to explore, one has to learn, one has to know by exploring, by going into it bit by bit. You made a very powerful point. You can easily know something by just asking. Discuss it. Talk about it. This is how, how I want it done. If you do it this way, I enjoy it. Why can't you do it that way? Because I believe even when it goes to the pastor, the pastor cannot do anything about it. Exactly. It will just come back to you. So why don't you sit down, talk about it, discuss it very well. Areas that you find difficulties in, iron them out, then you move on. And I cannot... I can really tell you, you will enjoy sex. You will enjoy your partner. Wow. Thank you. Apostle, we all have uh, our our, uh, shackles of privacy. And I believe that when the shackles of privacy is broken and the center cannot hold, then there is an overflow. So that now what needs to be kept within the confines of the marriage is now going out. Going out to the pastor, going out even to the in-laws or anybody around but I believe that uh, it is something that we should not encourage. And even we as pastors should not encourage people, uh, couples coming to us all the time and reporting what is going on. I mean, in the area of, it's not as if we won't, tend, we won't, we won't listen to, but we want to tell them that as much as they can, they should, they, should, they should try as much as they can to solve their problems and try to do it within themselves. Try to, I mean, man should be encouraged as the head of the union to play his priestly role as a man. And when that is done, there are certain cases, maybe the couple will be coming to the pastor and pastor, well, we have been praying, believing in God in this area. I think we need your support, not necessarily for you to come and make reports and so, that sort of thing. So I think we need to uh, look at that and then... Uh, Powerful. Now, uh, me, this is my take. If certain things are not going on well in your sexual marriage, please solve it in your bedroom. Don't bring in any third person. Don't go and confide in your pastor. Don't go and confide in your lawyer. Don't go and confide in your mother-in-law. You know why? Today, you might think you know. Tomorrow, the woman might now be on top. Should she also go and report to you? But you see, like Apostle rightly said, you need to sit down and communicate, discuss, talk about it. Kill hypocrisy in your marriage. That is where the whole problem is the hypocrisy. I don't want to say it. They will say, I am a spoiled man. I had 10 girlfriends before I came to marry. So I have a lot of experience. Listen, like I rightly said, the way you climb a coconut tree is not the same way you climb a popo tree. Forget about that experience. That cognitive levels must be dispatched. You must look onto something new. Now, we are just a few minutes to end it. I want us to look at two verses. First, Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, I'll read. Bible says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Me, I believe in perfection in all things. So the question is that, is it really possible for couples to end up being perfect in sex before they depart this earth. And if really it is possible, how do they go about it? Just few, a minute, a minute or so on it, and I will wrap it up. Yes, brother? Um, I believe so. Um, just like any um, discipline one would want to take on this earth, as you go through it, as you learn with time, you begin to um, 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 develop some kind of uh, experience in it. And so, um, I believe before one leaves this earth, if you do it the right way, if you continue, continue to discuss it, if you continue to engage yourselves in the act, I believe that you will be able to do it perfectly. Powerful. Apostle Jeremiah. I believe, that, um, I believe perfection is a, is a, is a journey. It, it's not a, like, more like a destination that I've got into that I'm perfect you are always striving to become perfect irrespective of your human frailties. So let perfection be a mark, be a goal that you set ahead of you and do everything possible. And how does perfection come? Perfection comes, 
you make a few mistakes, you get up, you don't give up, you still move on. You find ways and means to get it done. You find ways and means to make it, to improve and to perfect. The Greeks have, a, have this philosophy that what we Greeks receive, we improve and perfect. And that's how come that you can see wisdom, philosophy. The Greeks were so much into this because they always want to make everything that they receive perfect. So I believe it's a journey we have to, you know, uh, we will make mistakes, but let's strive towards it. It's more, it's, it's better. Powerful. Yes. God bless you. Now, for me, how do I become perfect? Ecclesiastes 11 verse 6. Bible says, in the morning, sow thy seed. So I want to talk of seed. Believers are just thinking of offering. The affection you show to your wife, the reverence and respect you give to your husband is a seed. In the morning, sow thy seed. Sex is an act of adoration and worship in the evening. Withhold not thy hand. Withhold not thy hand. Bible says, For thou knowest not whither of them shall prosper. Is it this or is it that? How will you know that when you were watering the flowers and mommy came and tickled you and gave you a communication that you are needed upstairs? Maybe that would have been the very day that you have found something wonderful about your wife. But you chose to what? Ignore or neglect her. So withhold not thy seed in the morning. Withhold not thy seed in the evening. And we believe you come to perfection. Now in conclusion, I want us to look at Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 verses 12. Bible says, put on therefore as the elect of God. Holy and beloved bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Listen, as we read in our earlier scripture of, I think it was Leviticus 19:34 or Exodus, please correct me whichever one it is. The stranger that dwelleth in you, you are supposed to love the person. Have mercy. Have mercy on your wife. So many men think sex is an act of punishment. If you have that mindset, Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It is wrong. Don't think she did something to you. So tonight during your own times of walking through your garden, you are going to show her that you are a man. And the ladies, don't use it as a prerequisite for demand. I ask you for the cloth. I asked you for this. You didn't mind me. Why do you want? Listen, your body belongs to your husband. And husbands, your strength and your everything belongs to your wife. Thank you very much, my panelist uh, and our viewers. It's been a joy coming your way. This has been the Eli Family Series of Trinity Praise Christian Center. And today we had our own brother, Brother Bernard Minta. He's an expert and a very high level professional within the oil and gas sector coming all the way from flames of glory but i really appreciate you we say thank you very much my other panelist has been our very own the one and only anointed apostle jeremiah ben Koranchi. he's a very gifted and powerful man of god he's a resident minister of Bekora. so until we come your way your way again for with the next episode we say may the lord lift up his hands in your marriages may all marriages that are having problems resolve and may god himself cause you to learn and enjoy your various acts of sex within the ambit of your marriage in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit god richly bless you very much bye-bye